Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. The last stream was very much about sort of consolidating things and getting things getting things that we'd already built up and running a bit better. So I think the um, the, the most telling example of what, what of what we've done and what is now working is, is looking here at the um, at all the science inputs in, into the into the research lab here. As you can see, we now have. Um, Tier one and two astro science, uh, fully uh, yeah, I'll say fully backed up because these go all the way down the belt down to here. And because we're not actually using any at the moment, because we're doing laser artillery research, which is an energy one, you can see these have now managed to fully back up all the way back down there. Similarly, energy one and two are thoroughly well. Okay, energy one, I can't, I can't tell, I can't tell the difference between energy one and energy two. Oh, so I can. If I zoom in far enough, you can just make out the stripe there. So these ones on this side are energy two. So we've got energy one and energy two doing. Uh, energy one is backed up all the way by the looks of it. At least certainly into the area where it's being made. Energy two is being produced at a, at a suitable rate and seems it looks like it's probably catching up it's being made faster than it's being used which is which is what we like to see that's that that's definitely a good thing energy three is also being produced but that's a bit more demanding on resources and so i wonder why that's wonder why that's struggling a little bit let's have a look in here so okay there's a shortage of the holmium solenoids so that's coming in from up here where there is a shortage ah we seem to have a shortage of plastic to make the uh, to make the holmium cables in order to make the holmium solenoids and so we're not producing the uh, the energy three data packs uh, science pack sorry as quickly as we would like to <clears throat> however if we look in here because we're keeping the the science lab loaded using the ins using loaders rather than inserters the uh, the lab is capable of, of, of stockpiling quite a lot of science inside itself so you can see we've got 200 of each of these and uh, up, we've got up to 144 of the energy threes stored in there so this is doing really well we've got lots and lots of science packs uh, built up and, and stored and then the third third type, we've got material one science packs. Those are being made in have been made in quite large quantities. And if we follow this one up, you can see this is backed up all the way back up into, into the factory as well. So we've got we've got plenty of all of that stuff. So the science is going really, really well. It feels like we've we've got to the point where we've sort of we've built up the infrastructure to the point where it can essentially keep up with what we're trying to do. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, that means we've pushed the problem back to another level where we, we're now seeing the shortage of plastics. So it's resource gathering and produ production of those basic resources. There's there's a problem in there, and we'll touch on that tomorrow because that's going to be something to look at down on Norvis. But as you can see, apart from that, the machinery we've got set up that's producing all of the science all of the actual science packs themselves is doing really really well and is, is well able to keep up we also seem to run out of holmium actually looking at this so we've got yeah we've got a couple of problems in there should we say but we will uh, we will try and get those sorted out and um, and, and get things running a bit better and then in the next episode <clears throat> the other thing that we're a bit short of along here is the significant data so you can see a little bit of it dribbling through there like this and if we look over here on the belts well we can see that down here this is where we're producing it we've got the uh, the four machines across here that have been uh, that have been turning the the astro and the energy data car uh, no uh, insights into significant data and it seems that these machines just aren't quite capable of keeping up so that this is this is where the problem is at the moment now we produce quite a lot of significant data. If we look at these machines, this one's made 300, 245, 145, 146. So we produce many hundred uh, significant data. That's probably about 800, 900 of them in total. Um, and so this belt down here that goes down to the Astro is completely full because we've we've not been producing down here quite as much. Um, but we've managed to so we've managed to fill that up. But then we but then unfortunately because of the way the splitter is working here, we've got one half of the splitter feeding just to the Astro, and then the other half is feeding to absolutely everything else. So we can follow up here, up here, up here. And see that so we don't we don't have enough basically we don't have enough uh, significant data coming through to keep both the energy and the and the material science satisfied. Uh, this is just a through a throughput issue. So we do need to, we we can make some improvements in here. One of those improvements we can make. We can look along here. You see if you, if we look closely at this machine, you can see we're currently doing a a two insight uh, recipe for making these significant data. So this 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 recipe will take in a supply of both the blue and the pinks, and to, in order to produce the gold significant data cards. So we've got eight, we've got 36 going in in total, and that produces six. If we take a look, if we take a look at this one here, if I go in here, if I change the recipe on this one, it drops stuff all over the floor, which is unfortunate. But I can now, now we've done some extra upgrade, extra science uh, and researches, I can now upgrade this to do the uh, the one that takes in the astronomic, the energy, and the material. Now we have a decent amount of material. I can do that, and we'll start to load it again. We'll have the bots come around and take all of those. Oh, yes, that's, that's neat. There's a um, there's a blue chest there to collect those. Well done, Tristan. I uh, I assume it was you. <laughs> 
Um, so that, that keep, that's going to keep things a little bit tidier and stop these being taken away and put into the chests of shame. But great, so that's great. Um, anyway, so what I was going to do is, is take copy of that and put it onto these th all three of these machines, and that means they will now load up with the um, with the the, uh, the the material science insights as well. And that means we're still taking in 36 in total across the three of them, but we're now producing eight significant data. So we've given, given it another 33% boost over what we had before, which it, as of itself was a 50% boost over using just one of them. So this is still going to be taking in exactly the same quantity of the insights, but it's going to be producing producing quite a lot more data in total. The other thing to note about, about this is you'll see that we are when when these run, because of the sheer number of insights and data cards that are taken in, it also spits out quite a lot of the um, of the blank data cards. 28 of those will drop onto the belt for every every time this runs, uh, and that's that's a lot. Uh, but they'll all come along here, and by priority they're going to be sent off up and down these these two belts. And the idea of these is that they're, they're then fed, fed in as an additional input to this stage, because at the moment we do, we don't actually need any significant any any uh, data cards on this. This is data card balanced in that it takes in the two catalogs it takes in uh, is enough to produce the eight in astronomic insights that come out but if we look up here at the energy science where these machines are doing the, the one where they take in three different types of catalog they also ne they now also need blank data cards because they're producing so many insights as an output they need some extra storage cards to put all that all that data onto and so that means we now need to have this input along here and and eventually we will hopefully need it along here once I've got Astro 3 up and running which is going to be one of my uh, one of my uh, next priorities because I really really want spaceships because they're fun Whereas over here, we'll see again over here, we have, we have, we're outputting a certain number of blank data cards in order to keep everything balanced. So, um, yeah, we need to, there's, there's, the, you need to make sure you keep the balance between those. Here, where you see this machine is still doing the two input one. And that's because, that's so that if we do actually run out of these blank data cards, we can carry on producing the insights. Uh, hopefully that won't be an issue. And as you can see, we've got a massive backlog of them, of the uh, insights at the moment. So that means only this machine is, is actually running and producing them. Um, and there's also a massive backlog of these memory cards. But you never know, later on when we start trying to do the four, input recipe it might start to struggle we will we'll, we'll have to wait and see basically one of the things I mentioned in the last video was that we were running out of we, we'd had too many low density structures in this warehouse here and this warehouse was completely full and that was breaking the bus system because it meant that anything that would needed to go down into the into the chests into the warehouses further down like for example I don't know Holmium ingots uh, was getting stuck in the in, in the one above here because there wasn't room to put it down into this into this warehouse so Tristan has fixed this um, in the method I, I suggested in the uh, in, in the video which is great he's put in a a storehouse here which can then take all of all of the uh, the low density structures can flow into there so we're now storing them all in here and if we have a look in this one in this storehouse you can see it doesn't have anything like as much room as a warehouse but it's got enough room to take all of all of all of these and that means it's removed the pressure on this warehouse that was happened that was causing it to be absolutely filled up filled up completely um, and, and jamming everything up now this means that when a, when a rocket comes in, bringing in however many thousand we, we extra ones to bring in, and I think it's going to be an extra 3,000, there's probably going to be room for at least most of them in here. In fact, I think there's going to be room for all of them in here. Um, but if not, we can put a few in here, and I think I think this should keep everything a bit more a bit more stable, a bit more balanced, and a bit more a bit more manageable. And so everything we should we should find that uh, we get we, we can we don't we don't get this jamming up. And that means that now if we look through these, we can see this one's got 400 stacks worth of stuff in it. This one's got 255. It's only about half full. Um, it's because this one ha this one is handling a lot more mat different materials. So it's handling the uh, all. It's handling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven different materials in this warehouse. Whereas most of the other ones are only handling five. Well, this one's got one, two, three, four. This yes, this one also has five. I don't know why we're using. Um, inserters rather than loaders here but never mind uh yes this one's got five we're just merging them onto belt on, onto three three different belts here and then down here they've all got five they've all got five things each because that's the way the bus system i put together works uh so that's why that one's a bit fuller uh it's 400 in there 255 345 uh just slightly less than 300 340 a bit less 193 and so on all the way down here so these are all these are all working quite nicely now we've got none of these are completely full which means the system is the system is working the uh the anything that lands here on the landing pad can then r rattle its way down through the warehouse and, and to go out in the correct place. Now down at the bottom here, we have the bottom two, and these tend to, these contain things that are used for for construction purposes. So we've got lots and lots of warehouses in here. We've got a huge number of inserters. This is a bit ridiculous. Huge number of pumps. To be honest, a lot of these numbers are a bit ridiculous, and maybe we should fiddle with these or just try and use use some of this stuff up. But anyway, yes, lots and lots of stuff gets gets dumped in here, um, and this is all stuff that we're going to use for building probably. 
Um, this one, uh, because this one is full, this one is then acting as an overfill, which doesn't really matter. We've still got we've got more train stuff in here. We've got um, bits and pieces that are going to be used for all, uh, for whatever whatever we're building, and that's that's mostly okay. There are a few things in here though that probably shouldn't be there, um, and this is this is the sort of the um, this has become our, our warehouse of shame where stuff gets dumped into when it's picked up by the, uh, the logistics network. So I think in the next episode, because quite a lot of this is my fault, I'm going to need to go in here and uh, and do a bit of tidying and moving things to where they should be. So those accumulators uh, could be put somewhere more sensible, probably. There's a couple of solar panels in there of the red ones. Actually, we should have we should deploy those. But it's mostly things like um, all, all this uh, beryllium plate, and there's some, there's some ore here, and some random cables, and uh, the tr tritium, and some uh, steel beams. But mostly it's things like these, the microwave observation observation frames, Mastro catalogs, various data cards across here. Um, all of these things should be taken out of this warehouse and put back into circulation, back into where they belong, so that we can actually use them for, for, for science purposes rather than clogging up warehouse purposes. And I think, yeah, I, I will accept the blame for, for, for most of the stuff that's in here, because... Uh, beryllium and all of the astro science stuff is all definitely going to be my fault uh, it's possible there's stuff that we can we can we could we could blame on other people in there as well but they tend to be i think they might be tend to be a little bit tidier than me so uh, yes <laughs> all of this stuff tends to happen because um if you when it's when you when you do some uh, building with bots so if you do if you come over if i come over here and i and i demolish a building or something like that then any any resources that are in that building so this one for example has some memory oh, that's a bad example because it's got um <laughs> This one, for example, has a UV observation frame in it. So if I demolish this building, that UV observation frame will be taken away and put into storage because it has to go somewhere. Um, uh, you could try and you can try and empty buildings out. You can put down requester chests and things to, to pull the stuff out manually if you want. But it's usually easier to wait until it gets to a little bit of it. There's a, until there's a bit of a mess like there is at the moment, and then go over there and tidy it all up in one go. I reckon. So I should be uh, I should be doing that at, at, at some point. It's not urgent, but it's nice. But it's it's a little bit of free sciencey stuff, and in and, and seems like a good idea to do to uh, to do that to tidy it up, keep things a bit more organised. We've had a few issues. Might be too strong a word. But we've had some um, some some. Complica complications might also might be too strong a word, but we've had we've had to work a bit on the um, on, on the recycling system over here. So as you remember, we have these three belts which are looking remarkably empty at the moment. We must have stopped doing uh, material science because that's usually where a lot of the stuff comes from. And so in order to demonstrate it a little better, I've dropped back to an earlier save where we, as you can see, we have quite a lot of contaminated scrap flowing along the uh, flowing along the disposal belt over here. I and mean, I say quite a lot. I, I've seen it much much fuller, but this is enough to demonstrate demonstrate the sort of the the, the sort of uh, the sort of re what I'm talking about. In fact, it's a bit fuller if I go a little bit further along. This must be where, I don't know, maybe a load of the material science machines dumped dumped a load of uh, scrap out onto the belt. But you can see, as, as we have flowing along here, we've got quite a lot of contaminated scrap. There's bits of clean scrap as well. Some data cards, both blank ones and uh, junk ones. And if we look in here, there's a there's a, um, a contaminated uh, cosmic water barrel going along here as well, and some empty barrels. So there's lots and lots of things on this on this uh, sushi belt. Various different uh, different thing different byproducts that we want to get rid of. So those, as you've seen before, all flowing down here. We've got the uh, the reformatting of the of the junk data cards going on here. That seems to be working quite nicely. We have enough machines just to uh, to deal with all of those. But they're producing quite a lot of broken data cards. So one of the things Tristan then had to do in the last um, in the last stream was put in. I think he put in some more machines along here to uh, to process the data cards down. So we've now got at least right now we've got enough of them, and they are they're more than able to keep up, and they're just producing a bit of scrap that's being dumped out onto the belt over here. Then that's all flowing down here, and we have a huge, we have a huge, well, we did have a huge backlog of scrap in these, um, in, 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 the t in the two chests here. But again, Tristan has extended the recycling, there's massive quantities of recycling. Uh, also, there's some rocket parts in here, which shouldn't be there. We'll have to have a look into why, why, why those have got there, and make sure it doesn't happen again. But uh, yes, we have, um, we have the rock we have a lot more uh, scrap recycling machines along here now that's dealing with a lot, with a lot of the load of that scrap. So that's, that's great. It is enough to keep up. Then flows down, flows down. The uh, the ores get cooked up. We don't seem to have any sort of um, problems keeping up along here. The uh, even with the uh, rare metals. It flows down, 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 and then then down here we have the contaminated scrap pour, pour absolutely pouring in here. And I looked at this earlier, and it was uh, it was uh, this this chest here was over full. And it turned out the reason it was over full was because the, um, the was because we couldn't dump it out fast enough on this side. So if I come along here, if I make these two inserters drop onto the near side of the belt, then we can get quite a lot more onto this output dump belts going along here. And then that and then it was then able to keep up. Now this isn't a problem right now because we don't have that much contaminated scrap coming in. But when we have when we have a bit more, then then it becomes a problem. We've then got the slightly tangled situation here where it feeds the scrap back up again. This was unfortunately my design, uh, I'm afraid, and it could have been a bit better. It would have been nicer if we'd, if we'd, if we'd had the... 
if we'd had the uh, contaminated scrap processing above the actual scrap processing, but then we'd have had to put the fluids and the gunk processing above it as well, and uh, I don't know. And, and then we'd have end ended up with either longer pipes going down to all of these systems, or with um, or, or with the entire thing upside down. And to be honest, I'm not really sure which would have been the better design for it. Um, I feel like there's enough back and forth in it that at some point you're going to end up with a belt or a pipe or something going the wrong way. And in this case, we'd, I decided it would be the scrap belt. And, and the nice thing about this is because this goes all the way back up to the top again, well, nearly all the way up to the top again, um, you can put other things on there as well. So if we wanted to, we, could, we, can, we can dump empty barrels onto this from the, um, from the unbarreling process down here. Uh, that would be counterintuitive, counterproductive. But we could. There are various things we could dump onto this belt to pass them back up here if we wanted to then filter them back through all the all the processing up here. So like the no oars wouldn't work. I don't I don't know what we could actually put in, but in theory we could because it it passes it back up to the top and then that feeds in here and yeah then we've got again the uh, large quantities of scrap being dealt with over here. So the system is now keeping up. As you can see, we don't have any scrap alerts popping up in the bottom corner of the uh, um, of, of the toolbar down here. So we, we know that all, everything seems to be okay. All of these alerts, all of these um, uh, speakers are, are, are currently happy. The next thing it, Tristan's been up to is producing glass and sand and quantum phenomenon data. Um, I don't know where he's doing any of this. The stone must be going somewhere and being and being sanded, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know where he's doing it. Let's have, let's. Have, I'm gonna have a quick look around, see if I can find any pulverizers. Except it wouldn't be pulverizers; it'd be mechanical facilities because we're in space. Ah, it's right here next to the um, ne ne next to where the stone is all all being churned in. So we we've, we've got some of it. So the stone that's coming through is being prioritised to go down into the station, which makes a certain amount of sense because that way, if there's anyone who's relying on a pickup of stone from somewhere, they can get it from here. But if there's an overflow, then it'll pass round round through here, be turned into sand, and then that sand will go down here into the. So we've got a sand station here, and then a glass station and a really long belt that comes down to here. And we've got oh, we squeezed a glass station in here. Um, that's slightly unfortunate because my intention was to use this station area for um, when we replace this rocket uh, with 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 uh, a tr with trains and um, space elevators. I was going to put, have that pull up here. Uh, so having the um, having that one stolen for purposes of glass production is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, this one is was genuinely spare. I can't remember what I I think I wanted it for something, but I can't remember what that something was. So it's um. The, uh, Nicking that one is absolutely fair. It's absolutely fine. And it's fair game. But the one down here, I did actually have plans for. So that's a little bit of a. It uh, could be a little bit awkward. Maybe, maybe we'll just disconnect the uh, the sand throughput and just have it producing glass. Maybe that'll be better. I'm not sure. But anyway, that'll use up any overflow stone from here, which is a good thing because I think we we are producing. We're producing a lot of stone here, and unlike the copper and the iron, that's not really being used by anything up in space. I don't think there is anywhere up in space that uses stone in any any sort of significant quantities, or maybe even in any quantities whatsoever, apart from apart from it going onto the bus for the original rocket science. And I don't think we get through enough there. Uh, he's also he spent some time sort of fiddling with all of the energy sciences. I think just make, making sure they're all running nicely. So if we look over here, we can, we can we can look in this train, and we'll see that this is now very nearly full. It's full of energy one and energy two catalogs. The energy three catalogs are not quite full yet, but we'll probably get there eventually. Uh, he hasn't managed to back up the, um, the the warehouses yet, but again, it's uh, it, it, it's it's filling up quite nicely, and uh, he's producing it at a decent rate. And as we saw earlier, he's currently able to produce all of these science packs on the other side, um, except for the um, except for the shortage of plastic and hormium, which is the uh, the the uh, the limiting factor on that. He did mention something about splitting off quantum phenomenon data, so let's see if we can find that. Here it is. So the quantum phenomenon data is being made in these uh, laser facilities, and then originally it was all being pumped down here into these uh, to down down here to be made into um, energy catalog two. Yes, two. Um, but he's put in the splitter here with a priority for that one, and now it's taking the excess away over here, filling up this. Um, filling up this, this 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 bus line for no apparent reason presumably he's doing that because it's needed for something else maybe it's needed for um for energy science four maybe it's needed for something else he's trying to build i'm not i'm, I'm not quite sure but there is a supply of that available now for for reasons <laughs> similarly over in the astro science i've been doing much the same thing with the um with, with the uh, x-ray data cards and the um so not from there x-ray data cards and microwave data cards so down here we've got the two of the two of them will be feeding onto this belt from one side and this belt from the, and the other side here so we'll have both of them on this belt here and then one side is being split off down here to go to the uh, the science production the other side is then split off where it comes up around here 
we've got quite a lot of it actually on the backlog here and that's fed all the way up to, to the, these machines and this, this is another one of those things where there's multiple available recipes so here we've got the, the um, we're doing the astrometric data through multi, multi, multi spectral astrometric analysis 2 so if we have a look in here we'll see we want it was the astro I don't know why I tap that in again because this is this one so you start off doing doing this data from infrared, visible, and UV. You pull in those three, and you can produce astrometric data. So you've got three in, three out. Nice. I mean, it, it works. Uh, it's, it's absolutely fine. And for producing the um, the catalog one, that, that's that's plenty. That's that's everything you need to keep to keep things up and running. But then when you start doing the astro catalogs two, you start to need quite a lot more of them. And so um, because you're doing all of the um, the gravitational an analysis data with these machines, so these these pull in quite a lot of them. So in order to keep that running uh, nicely, I've now switched over to this recipe, where you pull in the first three. So you've still got infrared, visible, and UV, but now you're also pulling in microwave and X-ray, and that means you can then produce ten of ten of the outputs. So you're pulling in five and producing ten. So you're going from producing one to one to going five, one to two. So it's much more efficient in the uh, in the data cards that go through. But also because of this, you then need you need the extra date blank data cards in order to have well for conservation of data cards essentially. So you need to pull in an extra five there, and so that meant I ended up doing a bit of nasty spaghetti here so uh, this was not great squeezing this in here but I, I did manage it so I put in an extra underground pipe here to give me a little bit of space to play with because this belt was already coming in here in order to feed them up here and that meant I was able to tap off some um, blank data cards down here and merge these two belts and allow me to get them on, on here now later on this is going to be even more awkward because there's going to be another belt coming in with um, the next two types of data of, of um, memory cards so we can do this recipe which is so we've got radio and gamma way, gamma ray so what I'm probably going to do with those is I'll have them come in on a belt that comes along here and then I'll do something like uh, let's see if I can demonstrate this um, and that and this and that and that and then you can have a belt coming in here like this uh, I'll have to go underneath that as well, I suppose. And then we'll repeat this along again and again along there. And the point is, this means that then, and then the data cards, the data cards that are coming in along this belt, will come up to here. We'll go through this splitter, and then this inserter here will be able to grab them off the splitter, put them into the, um, and put them into the machine here. But because these ones go under like that, they're they're still available for this this, this inserter to grab. So we, we, this will allow us to get three belts worth of. Um, of things into into this machine. Fortunately, this is a five by five machine, not a three by three, or I'd have completely run out of space for this. Um, but yeah, that 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 sort of trick there will will work quite nicely. And we'll come back and have another quick glance at that once it's built, probably if I remember. So yes, in the future that'll allow me to do this additional recipe type and get and this one this one takes in what is it seven and produces twenty. So that's almost one to three, which so it's e even better, even more efficient. So, as you can probably see, all of this has ground to a halt, and that, rather strangely, is due to a shortage of coal, of all things. So, coal is supposed to be being brought up here and dropped off into this delivery cannon chest, because we've got a request of 500 of it. So, that should drop in here, filter through, and go into here, and then pour down this belt here. Now, for reasons which I think are due to uh, Tristan's efficiency improvements, which we should be talking about in tomorrow's video again, um, there doesn't seem to be any coal. So this is all ground to a halt, which is a bit of a shame because I kind of wanted to show it off because with all, with, now that I've got eight machines along here all making the um, the, the blank uh, frames, that means we're now capable of completely filling these two belts, allowing them to flow down here. And then all of these machines are running almost flat out, which means we're taking in a full belt in here and it's probably maybe half a belt or I think into the, on, on maybe more than that in this one, uh, with an absolute outpour of frames coming down here and going into these machines ready to be uh, ready to be processed. And that means we're using up virtually all of what's being produced here. So I actually need to put in even more of these, uh, <laughs> and then maybe even even more in the future. Now I, I, I've spec'd it out. I designed it originally with the idea that I was going to have three belts of, uh, of frames coming out because I knew I was going to need a lot of them. Um, but if this is going to be using one and a half, and then this is going to be using another full belt, that's virtually all of them used already. Um, so that's what this belt here is for. This is going to come all the way across here, and then from another four machines over here, they can pour down this way. Uh, under under all of this stuff and, and down into into the machines because the new um, the new telescopes we've been putting in down here with the microwave ones and the X-ray telescopes also use the blank data card the uh, the blank frames in order to produce their exposed frames so we get through crazy crazy amounts of those and so down here I put in a load of additional uh, telescopes across here and I've put in speed modules in them all as well so these are now running really really quick well they're running at about double speed because we're still only using uh, tier two um, speed modules but they're running they're they're running quite quite quickly uh, at least when they have any frames to expose onto um 
but I have needed to put in an awful lot of them. The other problem with all these these massive, massive numbers of telescopes is they all need to be kept cool. So we've got all these pipes of cold thermofluid going in and warm thermofluid coming out. So one of the big things I spent quite a lot of time doing was just expanding and expanding and expanding this, these radiators across here. There's now a huge number of them. Uh, let's find out how many. Let's do it again, but dragging in the right place. I now have 155... Um, radiators across there all of them working at uh, almost three times speed because we've shoved in the uh, so many speed modules and the beacons into them so they're running really really quickly but it's still it was still only just keeping up now of course now we've got to the point where nothing's running because of the shortage of coal we'll find that all the tanks are in their happy idle position so over here we've got um 24 000 in the tanks over here uh, of the and we're waiting which is oh interesting um no wait not so interesting what are we what are we dividing by in here Right, we're we're looking we're looking to see if this we're looking to keep these these tanks at above twenty thousand in total. There's currently twenty four thousand, so they're happy, which is why we haven't had another train turn up. But then we're keeping all these tanks over here. That one at that thirty thousand with this pump. This one at forty thousand with this pump. And these two we're just letting fill up completely because we never have any. We don't need to pump the. We don't need to have any overflow coming back into them from these ones. So yes, these are. Um, so we've got we've now caught up with the thermofluid. We have as much as we want as much as we want um, in all of these tanks. The question is, is it going to be able to keep up when all of the uh, when all of the telescopes kick in again? We shall wait and see on that one because I honestly don't know. I think it's going to be enough, but I'm kind of looking forward to finding out with a little bit of trepidation. <laughs> I often say that each of the different types of science colour in uh, space exploration has a different challenge associated with it. And the astro sciences challenge is basically on the throughput of the intermediate ingredients, specifically the, uh, the, the data frames and the thermofluids. So you need to have an enormous number of them being produced here, the frames being produced here, churning through here to keep all of the telescopes happy. And you need massive quantities of thermofluid ha being handled properly in order to keep the telescopes happy as well. So this has been quite a, this it, 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 it's a big old radiator setup we've got going on here I mean, if you look at compare it to the one up here for the science park it's absolutely it's, it's probably two three times the size and this one doesn't even have beacons in it so yeah this is this is a much much larger undertaking than the other ones and I'm only two I'm only halfway through with the first two science packs so yeah this is going to be going to be quite a big job I think with um, my, my biggest concern at the moment is that these pipes aren't going to have enough throughput to keep to keep the uh, everything satisfied with the amount of thermofluid it needs which is why there's quite a lot of pumps around to make sure things to encourage the fluids to be going in the right directions and to try and keep the pressures up so i guess we'll see how that how, how, how that flows once we once we get to everything running and once we get it expanded even further i may find that i need additional um maybe maybe super chill maybe um who knows might need additional pipes running down to keep everything uh topped up and, and, and happy. So that brings us on to the uh, the third type of science that's being done up up in, uh, in Norbit, and that's the material science. So as I touched on in last week's videos, uh, Mike has now increased the amount of material testing packs that can be made by putting in, by essentially he's taken these machines that were actually originally across here, and he's rotated them down to over here and put in a second block of them. So he's now producing a, a nice steady stream of material science testing packs. Uh, he's currently limited by a bit of a shortage of, certainly mostly by a shortage of uh, rare metals which is um, interesting we'll have to have a look on Norvis and find out why there's such a shortage of those they are coming up by in delivery can and at a, a steady-ish rate like nope that was a different thing uh, like that there we go and being fed out over here but it doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to be enough to keep up we maybe maybe we need more delivery cannons firing maybe we need more Maybe we just need to improve technology a bit so we can we can move away from delivery cannons. I don't know, but at the moment it is producing a steady stream, which is then able to which is that can then flow up here. We can pump it through all these machines here to make the cold data. You can see the uh, all the um, the data cards and the piles and piles of contaminated scrap coming out from there. Similarly, up here we've, we've got enough hot data at the moment by the looks of it, so we're um, we're, we're dribbling it through a little bit, but basically uh, it's not it's not needed in the, quite the same quantities because there's a backlog of it. Up here we've got uh, tensile and compressive. I think I talked about these a little bit in the last video, um, but they, as you can see, they are there is a plentiful supply of, of both of those. And then up here we've got the normal thing, as you would expect, where we're turning all of those then into the catalogs. And the limiting factor at the moment is the cold data. In fact, what's the cold data being limited by? Is it being yes? It's being limited by the rate that the uh, material testing packs are coming in at, which is a, an interesting thing to be uh, to apparently be short of. So, but that's going back then going back to the um, all, all the things down here that I was talking about. So. Yes, the system is basically working. We are producing the um, the material science catalogs that's been put onto here, and then flowing out to go into the train over here. And the train is it's it's more than half full. So yeah, I'd say that's going pretty well. We can then um, once the train fills up, it can then be shipped off to go and, and dump that over in the science area. 
So Mike is not resting on his laurels too much. He's, he's continued. Um, he's now he's now making the uh, the iridium girders, which is apparently I'm, I didn't realise that required vulcanite, but okay. So you use vulcanite presumably to cook the iridium plate into a into a heavy girder shape, and he's got lots of those. So that's a ni nice health, healthy supply of them. Brought up here, and then we can do rigidity data testing so you're taking a girder and presumably trying to bend it that means you might end with there's a decent chance there's a 50 percent chance that you don't manage to bend the girder and so you can get it back and use it again um you also get a load of scrap out which is presumably when the broken girders and as usual the lube gets turned into contaminated cosmic water which then so that'll be why we were seeing some cont contaminated cosmic water barrels on the um on the bus well not not that one specifically but down here he's got his contaminated cosmic water but from these these steps uh, then being brought over here and gradually barreled up and chucked onto the bus, which is, as I, as I said last week, it's a sensible way to get rid of it. I, yeah, it it, it works. That 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 makes it makes a lot of sense. So we got the uh, the the, tr the trying to trying to bend the uh, data the uh, girders over here, and then something else will be going in here, and then there'll be another two of them as well, of course, and that will allow him to start making the uh, the tier two uh, material catalogs. And once he's got the tier tier two material catalogs, that's going to allow us to start making uh, looking into much more advanced science, including very very important things like space elevators, which we've all been absolutely desperate for for I don't know how long, because that's going to allow us to move away from a lot of these delivery cannons. Um, so down here we've got delivery cannons bringing up plastic and iron, copper, rare metals, uh, concrete, uh, and yeah. So all all of those ones we can replace then with with uh, with 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 trains that go up and down the elevator. Um, the the imasite is still going to have to come from a different planet, so that's going to be slightly harder to deal with, as is the iridium. Um, but we, we so we, those will take a little bit longer to get upgraded. But the, all the rest of the ingredients, they're going to we're going to be able to switch them over relatively quickly and easily in order to start being brought up by train from directly from Norvis, and that's going to that's going to make things. It's going to mean we're going to get far more coming through in, in each each load. So rather than a stack coming through on a delivery cannon, a train will turn up with 100 stacks or whatever. And so that should then solve a lot of the input problems over here, as long as the as long as the supplies on Norvis are capable of keeping up. So uh, this might be another case of where we, we find it, we find a problem and we push it back and push it back and push it back until we can, until it gets back to all the way back to the resource gathering area. Um, but you know, that's 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 what Factor Factorio is all about. So when we're uh, we, we're used to that sort of thing happening. <laughs> Mike says he set the material testing pack belt splitter output priority to boost um, material one catalogs. I think what he's referring to is this prioritization down here, um, where he's pa passing them all up this way to go into the science production, rather than down here to go into the station where they can be put into a train and taken away for other people's science purposes, uh, which is uh, going to upset Tristan at some point in the future. But we. For for now, because we're so desperate to get the space elevators, that's probably sensible. I also notice he's put in the prioritisation to keep the um, packs on the bus coming along here, and I think that's why it's that's what and that's why it's the cold data that we're so short of, because this is now the the lowest priority. So he's they're they're all being fed up here and used by everything else in preference, and then the cold one down here is only getting anything that's an absolute overflow. Um, so that is that means that these machines are not running particularly quickly. So if, if for example, if I came along here and I switched that over to uh, left side priority, then you'll find then you'll see obviously this now sets all of the uh, material science packs to be dumped down this belt and to come over here instead of going up straight up this way. And if we fast forward a little bit, you'll see you'll see the effect that, that has on the uh, on the science production. So as you can see, the um, material testing packs have finally made their way all the way to the end of the belt over here, and we're now they are now going into this belt faster than they are being used up. So we now actually have a sufficient supply here to keep all of these machines happy. Just, um, <laughs> it's, it's not grow the the number on the belt is not growing very quickly, but eventually this will back up all the way along to here, and then we'll start to fl allow them to flow along the uh, the rest of the system. Now that the the spectacular thing about this isn't so much that we're just that we're only just able to keep the uh, the cold machines on one half one half of the cold machines satisfied with all of the material science packs we're producing. The interesting fact thing is that now because we've got all the, the because we're now using those a bit more ac a um, actively, we've got a lot more of the cold science flowing through up here, and that that now means we're producing the uh, catalogs a lot more quickly because as I said, it was the um, it was the cold that was the limiting factor. We're now producing bringing them through fast enough that we've just about managed to satisfy all of these um, all these research servers up here. So we're now producing the the catalogs much more quickly. Now, of course, this is only going to be a temporary thing. If we leave this like this, then all of the other machines, the ones making the hot data and the uh, squash data and the stretch data, are going to then run out of material testing packs as well. So, 
I'm not sure what the best way to, to uh, prioritize these splitters is. Probably not. The best way is probably not at all. And that, that's still going to mean that the lion's share will go to the um, the cold side. So we'll get half of them will go to this bank, a quarter of them will go to this bank, we'll get an eighth going to this one, a sixteenth to this one, and so on, are getting halved every time going upwards. So it's yeah, it's difficult to decide how what the best way to balance all of this stuff is. Um, I'll leave that in there uh, as a problem for uh, Mike to solve because I don't want to. <laughs> but it, it does, yeah, it does show that the uh, the problem here is mostly a throughput one on the um, on the production of the material testing packs rather than anything else. One thing you might have noticed if you're really observant and far more observant than I am probably um, is that our UPS number up here has now jumped up to about 50 uh, from the sort of the 35 it was on before. Um, and there's a good reason for that, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in tomorrow's video. So please make sure you come back then to uh, to find out how we've managed to make some massive improvements on the on the UPS there and um, also various other improvements are at, at, in places other than Norvis orbit so we've, yes we've been definitely making some uh, some big changes there and there's lots of other planets to look at so as always thank you very much for watching please check out the channel sponsor that's trefoil.be if you use the code Lawrence Blaze you can get 20% off your Factorio or Minecraft or whatever else servers uh, I shall be back tomorrow, as I say, with the second half of this uh, of this update, and then on Monday when we should be carrying on with the build as we, uh, with with the, with the playthrough as it's go as it's going. And I feel like we've, we've we've had the last stream we were doing a lot of sort of going back and sort of tweaking things and getting bringing the speeds up to um up to the sort of up basically going in and fixing inefficiencies and problems in the system. Uh, so this uh, in the next stream we should, we'll be able to go in and start hopefully doing some new stuff again as well. So that'll be that'll be very very a lot of fun and very satisfying. Get some new exciting toys to play with. Uh, like this laser artillery turret that Tristan's been researching for a while. I'll also be back on Wednesday for the XCOM stream, so come along there if you want to have a soldier named after you and see if they can become a hero. Uh, there on Tuesday, there well, last Tuesday there was a video that came out for supporters about how, what, what you should take with you on your first rocket when you go to space in space exploration. And on this Tuesday it'll be coming out for non-supporters as well. I think that's pretty much everything that's going on on the channel at the moment. The GTA videos are taking a bit of a hiatus while I uh, work on other uh, other projects, um, so I hope you don't miss them too much. But there's always more stuff coming out on the channel, so uh, you keep an eye on it and, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.